Hiya! That was very northern. Um, how is everyone? I'll leave some time for you to answer. Brilliant! Unless you've had a bad day. Um, then that's not brilliant. I am sorry about that. So, today is a rest day. I'm out of breath because I just had to run downstairs to get my rosé. Um, I'm terribly unfit. So that's just behind the... it's not gonna fall over. No, it's not gonna fall over. Welcome to Robin's rest day recap, review. What did we decide on? Whichever one sounds better. Robin's rest day... Robin's rest day... rest day recap with Rosé. Welcome. So for those of you who don't know, I usually do this as a blog post, um, but instead I decided to be a little bit more interactive in it. Uh, and also I'm developing carpal tunnel syndrome, probably, from the amount of writing that I've had to do. So let's recap the Tour de France. Insert ITV4 that do 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 tune. Banger. So I'm gonna put this flag down. Everyone like my Jurgen Klopp scarf? No, you probably don't. Everyone like my flags though? Yes. This is green. Um, on my controller, it did say yellow. I was going for a yellow theme during the Vuelta. We can have red. I'm deviating. So let's start from the first stage. Oh my God, chaos right? Absolute chaos. I'm not looking at the right place. Chaos. <laughs> Sorry. So I think probably it wouldn't be remiss of me to say that it would probably you'd be able to count the amount of riders that did not crash on one hand. If you're one of those riders, congratulations. But unfortunately, Thibaut Pino was not one of them. Uh, he... I can't remember which kilometre he crashed that, that's really bad. Um, but I know that he did at the three kilomet three kilometres to go mark. So we send our best wishes to Pino because it looks like he is still struggling with those issues. We saw him, his back, I don't know what that was, on the bike yesterday. So moving on. So many crashes, horrible weather meant the stage was neutralised. Lovely, yes? except not for Estania. They shot off and you can call it what you like, you may call it karma or you can call it racing because at the end of the day, if it's not officially neutralized, you can attack whatever you want. It's just uh, your reputation in the peloton will probably take a hit if it hasn't already. So, is a year, I think, slammed into a pole at the side of the road and then they went back into the peloton with the tail between their legs. Christoph won the sprint. It was not very contested, I would say. Well, it was contested sprint-wise, but the crash at the three kilometer mark did rule out some people getting caught behind, which is very unfortunate. Um, I would be one of those people if I was a sprinter. So Christoph, congratulations for taking the first yellow jersey. Moving on to stage two. Now this was very intense, okay? It felt like a track cycling event where it's all cat and mousey. Do you remember Victoria Pendleton in 2012? She was the queen of that. So Alaphilippe, Hershey and Yates. Now Alaphilippe ended up taking the win and the yellow jersey and he dedicated it to his dad, which was beautiful because his dad had passed away uh, a couple of months ago. Skipping forward to stage five, because we've got a lot to talk about. We don't, it's just my dinner will be out soon. Stage five was a relatively quiet day. Um, by relatively quiet, I mean extremely quiet, nothing happened. Um, the only thing that happened, I would say major, was actually after the stage. We got all of the drama. Alaphilippe took a feed, I think with 17 kilometers to go, and he got 20 second time penalty. So Yates found himself in the yellow jersey, which I guess isn't the best way to ride yourself into a yellow jersey, but nevertheless, 
he's worn it with pride i'm talking rubbish it's because i can't edit it i'm just gonna post this as a video stage seven can anyone guess what happened i left that silence for you to answer if you don't know thomas again went on a breakaway now thomas again is a brilliant writer and i say i don't remember the year maybe it was 2017 18 I said, oh look, Degent's going Degenting, and hence a hashtag was born, hashtag Degenting. That is when you go on a solo breakaway and you distance everybody and they're suffering in your wake while you go out for a Sunday stroll. Now, unfortunately, he was reeled back in with about 30 kilometers to go and didn't get the combat if it come up. The joys of live video combativity award that went to us um but his move actually forced them to chase down again so oh and blew the peloton apart so i get it i get it congratulations us you did very great now stage nine the one we just had with mark hershey one of the most valiant attempts of a solo breakaway and a potential stage win i've ever ever seen yes was distance but he limited his damage and what was very stressful, at the exact same time we got a Sainsbury's delivery, ladies and gentlemen, uh, was Roglic and Pogaccia coming together at the top of the climb. <laughs> it was very stressful. I thought Pogaccia was going to go into the barriers. Fortunately, he did not. So we're good. Um, well, he's not good. That was stressful, but we're moving on. Oh, one and a half kilometers to go. Mark Hershey got caught and it was devastating but there was hope that he would stay on and potentially contest the sprint which he was very good at and as they got closer to the line they got closer to the line i got more further back in my seat because i get very nervous and i show that at cycling races which is brilliant when you work in cycling but anyway pogacha took the stage win which was brilliant congratulations um whether <laughs> it was the most celebrated win? Probably, unfortunately not, because I know a lot of people were really vying for Hershey to win after that really heroic breakaway attempt and staying on at the end. But where does that leave us now, ladies and gentlemen? Roglic is in the yellow jersey and Bernal is 21 seconds behind and as we all know this is cycling anything can happen and we're in a coronavirus pandemic so it's double anything could happen fortunately we haven't had any positive tests yet uh at the time of videoing this but we shall see this is getting long so i'm gonna move on so i took some questions from people that wanted me to review things and marie's we're talking about we're talking about masks so it's very stressful um being in a pandemic anyway it's very stressful when people at the side of the road don't wear the masks please wear your masks noted it goes above your nose that's a key point of the mask please do that and we will have a tour de france don't do that we probably won't have a tour de france again i keep looking at the wrong side of my phone anyway and Stas and Rupert also wanted me to bring up Black Lives Matter. Now, this is very a big issue that has been on my timeline for a while now. And I'm trying to think of the right words to say. Black Lives Matter. They really obviously do. I do not want anyone coming into my comments telling me that all lives matter. Because while they do, it removes the barriers and the systemic racism and the police brutality that other people say uh of the people face so if you come into my mentions with that you are being i would say at this point ignorant of the real world and what's going around us and the reason i brought up black lives matter to do with cycling and then copped a load of hate for it was because i'm a very avid watcher of sports basketball, baseball, football, you name it. All of them have seen protests for racial equality. And there has been nothing in cycling. And for a very long time, I've known that cycling has a gender problem because I'm a woman and I'm in this sport. 
and I'm honestly shocked that it's took me this long to really sit down and analyse that it has a race problem. There is one black rider at the Tour de France. His name is Kevin Reza. Now, ITV, I think, Ned Bolting told me that they will be running a segment on him. I'm not sure what time it is, because all of the clocks in my room seem to have stopped working when I was getting my degree. But that should be on air at seven, and then we'll probably be on the ITV hub and beyond. And I believe they're gonna get his thoughts on Black Lives Matter too. So it's very important that we listen to him. And also at the same time, I don't think Black Lives Matter movements, they don't have to be started necessarily by the only black person in the peloton. I think if we sit there and wait for someone else to do it, we're missing our part. We're missing everything that we could do. And unfortunately, I need to cut this video short because I'm not sure of the time length on Twitter, but this is a very huge subject that I could spend a lot of time on. Cycling has a gender problem and cycling has a race problem. And if you're not willing to have a genuine discussion with me, if you come in to my mentions and insult me, call me every name under the sun, I'm not going to listen to you. So thank you very much. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. And if you want, I've been doing some reading. Uh, the book I've been reading is called So You Want to Talk About Race? It's very good, covers systemic racism, police brutality, everything. I'm probably about three fifths of the way through, but it's very good so far. So I will end this, although I have not said everything that I want to. Um, I think there's layers to everything that I've said. Um, but please remember Black Lives Matter and let's have a civil discussion and genuinely put forward some ideas of how we can help move this sport further. Okay, thank you for listening. If you've stayed this long, if you haven't, completely understand. Right, bye. I'm gonna drink my rosé now.